My name is Graham Van Oyen, and this is my GM Vandura. We call it the Moho right now. I've lived in it for two and a half years. This fireplace is a converted propane tank. Um, I didn't make it. Somebody else made it. A guy who's a pretty good welder actually made it. He cut this opening here and then flipped the tank on its side. So it gets really warm in here. This is my only heat source for in the motorhome, but it throws heat really well. If I have a fire going in here, the flames will go right up the chimney all the heat will emanate off the chimney here, you know, and it has a really warm wood smell, kind of like camping without the smoke. I use offcuts from the wood shop at Maker Labs. So I rent uh, space here at Maker Labs and I have a membership here. So I use the wood shop for most of my building and uh, all the tools, and I uh, use the offcuts and they're perfect size to bring. Yeah, this is a closet for clothing. There's a, a mirror where my girlfriend will have all her makeup and do that kind of thing. This is my section over here where I keep all my clothes and here's another closet here. Right now it's just full of bedding. This is uh, to reduce the humidity. It's a uh, small dehumidifier from Eva Dry. They probably owe me some money for mentioning that. To live in a van, um, well, you need a bed, first thing, but then you need some place to eat. So I built a kitchen right away, and I got this sink hooked up to water here. At first it was just the sink with the drain, but I got the, the plumbing fixed recently. Um, so the pump works. There we go. And hot water heater here. Um, it needs to be vented before it can work, so that's an, the next project. One of the next projects. This is my propane stove, used to cook all manner of coffee and soups. And this is my fridge here, which is currently full of lemons, juicing lemons. I'm going to start a juice business uh, using the van, hopefully soon. And uh, sell juice out of this window right here. We call it juice this. I have a toilet and a shower. The toilet works, shower doesn't work yet. I need to get the hot water working first. But it's coming along, hopefully, within the next month or so I can get it to work. I have to tile the tile the bottom here where the water will fall, make it all waterproof, put in a shower curtain. Um, I want to be able to take a shower in here. Community center for showers, which also means that I'm healthy because I end up going for a swim and going to the hot tub at the same time. So I find that living in an apartment, I'm actually less healthy because I have less time to go to the community center now, where I'm not forced to anyway. I have 300 watts of solar uh, capability on the roof and this is my charge controller here. This is an inverter here. You can see the lights flicker when I turn that on because it uses quite a bit of power actually. This is the uh, breakers, the breaker box here. And then behind here you can't see but this is where I keep my battery. It's 60 amp hours of uh, lead acid battery which is, I know it's not the best for the environment. I'd like to get a, a lithium battery if I can afford one in the future. This is the hatchway up to the roof. So this is Maker Labs. We're in the loading bay. This is the chimney of the fireplace. The smoke just comes out there. There's 300 watts of solar here, there's two fans, and there's my black water tank vent. Yeah, I lived in this van for two years before the rebuild and half a year after the rebuild, and uh, currently I'm in an apartment. Um, 
sharing with my girlfriend. And the van is being converted into a juice truck. So I'm going to put it to use, put it to work. It's going to be great. This is my studio at Maker Labs where the magic happens, where I build everything that I need for the van or other projects. Uh, recently I've been working on this juicer. This is for the juice truck conversion. Put the, the fruit in here. This crushes down. Psh, juice comes out the bottom. This is where everything else that doesn't fit in the van goes. Plus the second level up. Teaching a van building class. It went great, actually. It was my first time teaching the class. The students liked it. It was really good. I decided to live in a van because the cost of rent in Vancouver is astronomical. And I like the idea of being self-sufficient and off the grid. Living in a van has made my life um, a lot simpler in terms of I can't afford to have anything that I don't need around me because of a uh, limit on space. So anything that um, is kind of arti you know, artificial or unnecessary is gone right away. I had to learn everything from scratch to learn how to build everything from doing the plumbing in my sink to framing the van to doing all the electrical work to uh, you know setting up the wood fireplace so that it didn't burn the place down uh, everything so I've learned a lot and I'm still learning a lot and redoing everything I think this is the second time I did the plumbing uh, over the last year mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's been a big journey. It definitely, definitely uh, changed my life a lot. I bought my van originally for $2,000 and it ran. And uh, I had to spend $2,000 again to make it run well. And then I didn't pay rent. So I, you know, I could afford to do that. Being able to not pay rent, I could actually save a bit of money and I saved up enough to do this rebuild, which has taken about a year and a half so far, doing it part-time. Uh, this lifestyle definitely isn't for everybody, but if you enjoy doing things for yourself and challenges, and you're not afraid of hard work, you can do things for yourself. Like, you're handy, I guess. You need to, to have a bit of uh, skill with tools and a bit of structural knowledge but basically if if you're not afraid of it then you can go for it but if you if you enjoy uh, material things a little bit too much then this probably isn't for you it was terrible when I first uh, started this project nothing worked it was falling apart there was holes in the sides of the exterior, the wood was rotting, none of the electrical worked. Well, the lights worked for a month or two. Um, the fridge, I tried to turn on one day and uh, it had an electrical and a propane option. So I, the electrical option didn't work, so I turned on the propane option thought, okay, I'll, I'll step outside and wait a few minutes and I should come back inside and the fridge should be cold. And uh, I opened the door to come back inside and it was like a wave of propane just hit me. It's, it was so dangerous. I tore this place apart down to just the chassis and the cab and then rebuilt from that. Probably the best part of the van at that time was the engine. I found it in Mission. There was a, a crazy redneck who wanted to sell his van and uh, so I bought it from him and I, I couldn't figure out how to start it so I just stayed in it until he started it for me and asked me to leave. If you want to rebuild your van definitely allow yourself more time than you think it's going to take because it definitely takes a lot of time.
and everything that you do that you think is simple and this is how you're going to do it, you're going to realize that it would be better a different way and you're going to redo it. I didn't know anybody who had a van before I started, um, but I just like the idea of being nomadic and off-grid and uh, creating my own home affordably and, and how I wanted to make it. After living in a van for a couple of years, of course, I've met a lot of other people who do the same kind of thing. There's definitely a community out there. There's different communities, actually. You know, there's there's the retiree community. There's the the affordable nomad community. There's the crackhead community. Um, I don't know if they're really a community. There's there's all different kinds of people who live in vans. It's, it's not one kind of person. But then there's you know there's retirees who just can't afford to live in the city, right? Yeah, I I've always been pretty handy, I guess, because I I grew up with tools and things. But I've never really been like a tool person. Like I I grew up in that kind of environment, so I learned it. But I was never really drawn towards using tools or making stuff that much. I, I like to think about stuff more, so I've been more of like a, a designer, I guess, in a sense. Um, and I, I really like ideas, like new ideas. Um, and maybe the idea of living in the van was more attractive to me than actually living in the van. You know, and I think that this might be true of a lot of people. But, you know, then the reality sets in, and you do live in a van suddenly. You know, because you, you put yourself into, and it doesn't meet any of your expectations. And it's totally different than what you thought it would be for better or for worse, you know. And mostly for worse, right? Because people have these romanticized ideas about how it's going to be, how great it's going to be. And then you you find out what it actually is like. And, like, little things become really difficult. You know, like, where does your water come from? Oh, yeah water comes from like some magical tap when you live in a house right but if you live in a van then you, you have to be self-sufficient you have to work for every aspect of your life which actually makes your life much more meaningful because you really know what it takes to live yeah it makes you very independent i was working in film and uh this lifestyle definitely affords itself to uh film life because you're always moving to a different film set and you don't have a, very much time to sleep. So if your home is at set, you don't have a commute. I'd like to start a channel showing my build, actually. Um, I just don't have the video skills, I guess, or the equipment at the moment to do that. You know, it's always good to have a backup plan. And living in a van is much better than uh, any other backup plan I've got. Life is something that you have to respect because you only get one. So make it worthwhile. Thanks so much for doing a tour of my vehicle. See you next time.